Joining us now in an exclusive interview, Substack CEO, co-founder, Chris Best. Chris, thanks for being with us this morning. Let's start with a very basic question. What is Substack's role in the media landscape? Can your newsletters, the direct to readers newsletters, replace a traditional newsroom, should they? Thanks for having me. You know, we started Substack because we think that what you read matters. And the current media landscape that's dominated by social media is making us angry and dumb and is kind of breaking our brains. And we think that we need a real alternative to the business model, the engagement-based business model that that creates. And so we see Substack, which is an independent, a platform for independent writers, as an alternative model that puts writers and readers in charge for the benefit of all. How is that different than a traditional newsroom, Chris? I understand your point about social media, but are traditional newsrooms still doing and serving that role? So the thing that Substack makes possible is for you as a writer to go independent. It didn't used to be possible for you to strike out on your own and connect directly with your audience. And so you have this incentive to earn and keep the trust of your audience rather than uh, you know, serve, serve whatever, whatever other, other thing you had to serve before. So, Chris, um, this reminds me a bit of Neva, the search engine that we had on just a few days ago that's doing paid and subscription rather than free search subsidized by ads. And the CEO co-founder there said it's a matter of incentives. Like, yeah, Google could launch a paid search engine and say that they're not going to use your data, but their business model incentivizes them to do otherwise. Is that your argument for why Facebook's bulletin uh, isn't an alternative to Substack? Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, this, the, at the heart of Substack is this new model that changes the, the fundamental rules of how the business works, right? It, it changes the incentive structure. So readers know that on Substack, they're subscribing to someone they can trust that has the incentive to earn and keep their trust. And Facebook is a whole business that's built on advertising, that's built on engagement. And so if they try to make a clone of Substack, it's like an oil company launching a solar energy thing. It's, it's laudable, it's cool, but it's, they're not going to shut down the pumps. But how are you going to survive? Because Facebook is big, and when they launch a newsletter platform, they can afford to undercut you on price and, uh, and let writers uh, you know, charge and not take a cut. Um, and meanwhile, as far as I can see, you don't have an app right, to help do sign up, because so, you'd have to give Apple a cut if you did that. I mean, that's a lot of big powers to fight, isn't it? Look, there's no way to be a successful company without ruffling a few feathers and without going through the big people trying to copy you. And I think the thing at the heart of Substack that makes us different is that we're a company that's built for writers, right? Our whole business model is designed to, to support writers. We make it free to publish to start. And then when you make, we only make money when the writers make money. And so the writers know what our incentive is, right? The incentive alignment isn't just between the readers and the writers. It's also between the writers and Substack. They know what we're doing. They know we're here. They know that they can trust us when we say that we're here in support of writers. And I don't think you, that Facebook can say that.